Hey everyone, welcome to our very first NHD topic tip. I'm going to be focusing on the question of can I do a local history topic for my NHD project? So the answer is yes. NHD does not restrict or tell you what topics to do in history. Now, your teacher may have certain parameters that you need to follow in the class, so always check with them when choosing a topic for NHD. But NHD wants you to pick topics that interest you and that you really want to do research into. And maybe a local history topic might inspire you and become the basis of your NHD project for the year. So why should you focus on a local history topic? I have brought in two guests to give their explanations on why they feel local history is so important. Why study local history? Oftentimes, we think of history as a nationwide or global set of events. However, this mentality is not entirely accurate. History is all around us. It's in the name of your city or street, the location of your favorite park, and the stories told to you by your grandparents. History is everywhere, far and near. You don't necessarily have to visit the Roman Colosseum when there's history in your own backyard. Local history doesn't usually focus on heroic deeds or the actions of world leaders. Instead, it's more concerned with everyday people, much like you and me. By learning more about our cultural and social past, we can create a more informed future for our communities. Studying local history allows us to narrow down broad topics. For example, if you wanted to study the New Deal, try to see which New Deal programs operated in your area. Were there bridges, buildings, or highways constructed by the Works Progress Administration? What about trail or forest maintenance provided by the Civilian Conservation Corps? Reach out to your local library or archive to see what events played a role in your local history. When thinking about topics for National History Day projects, I always encourage students to consider local topics. National History Day is a great way for students to explore their community, their town, their city, or even their region. They can look at people, places, or events specific to their area, or they can look at how people or events outside their area influenced what was going on locally. So for instance, here at the United States Marshals Museum, we could look at topics more local, like the Marshals riding out of Fort Smith into Indian Territory and what they were doing, or we could look at how what was happening in Washington, D.C., what the government was doing, was affecting what was happening here, since the marshals are a federal agency. Students could also look at how local residents responded to national or international events, such as how people in your area responded to World War II. And there are many different ways to frame local topics. And from a judge's perspective, judges love local topics. Now, they're usually topics that, that we haven't heard much about, and we get to learn something, too. So when you're helping your students decide on topics, have them do a little digging in your local museum or library and see what they can come up with. They may find a topic that they had never even thought of. And hopefully they'll walk away with a new appreciation for where they live and why their community has come to be the way it is today. So if we've chosen to do a local history topic, where might we start? Well, we have to go straight to the source. And that's really easy to do if you're doing a local topic. You need to head over to your historical societies, your local libraries, and your local archives. Those local organizations are going to have some of the best resources for you. They're going to know about different local history topics and what type of sources are available to you, depending on the topics they can tell you about. So to give you some food for thought, I thought I'd give my own local history example of how I might do a local history topic for an NHD project. So I'm originally from New Haven, Connecticut, and so I'm going to take us back to May 1st, 1970, on the day of the May Day protests in New Haven. Some of you may know or have studied the Black Panthers, and we most commonly associate the Black Panther Party with Oakland, California. However, this was a national organization, and New Haven, Connecticut had their own chapter of the Black Panthers. And it resulted in 1969 in the arrest of nine Black Panther members, including the nationally known Bobby Seale, when they were arrested on various charges, including connections to the death of Alex Hackley a Black Panther member believed to be a police informant. Now, when this arrest happened and the New Haven Nine were taken into custody, 
protest erupted across the country, and especially on college campuses who were protesting civil violations and protection of human rights. One such incident turned into violent rioting at Harvard University. And so as a result of that, Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut decided to take a different approach. I know the basis of my topic, I know what happens, but where can I go to find sources that might help me understand everything that happened during this point in New Haven's local history? Well, I know I can start in two places. I wanna check out Yale University's online exhibit on the New Haven Nine and on the May Day protest and on the subsequent trials of the New Haven Nine in 1970. But I also wanna check out the New Haven Museum, which was originally founded as the New Haven Historical Society. Both of them will have important photographs and other primary sources that are gonna help me figure out what happened during the May Day protests in New Haven. And so once I go to examine those local archives and museums, I might find sources like this. So from the New Haven Museum, we have an image of the Free the Panthers protest that happens on the New Haven Green. So when I mentioned that New Haven did something a little differently to avoid the rioting that happened in places like Harvard, Yale University decided to open up the campus to all protesters. Regardless of what side they were on, their beliefs, it did not matter. They opened up the university and it spilled out into the rest of the city of New Haven. And for much of the day and for most of the day, peaceful protesting went on in the city of New Haven as people on both sides protested either in support or opposition of the Panthers, known as the New Haven Nine. In fact, that day, New Haven saw between 15,000 and 30,000 participants flood the New Haven Green in order to protest. So unlike the protests we saw in other places, which did turn extremely violent, New Haven only saw small spikes of violence when it came to the protests. It remained a relatively peaceful movement. And the reason for that being is that the community rallied against those outside forces in order to help engage in only peaceful protest. And by doing so, they had to resist violent fringe groups that wanted to disrupt peaceful protesting. And they faced pressures from the federal government, including the FBI and President Nixon. But what they accomplished was to band together as a community and host a protest in which both sides were allowed to peacefully voice their opinions with little violence. Now, what does that mean overall? Well, what does this local story help us to think about? How does it change or reshape history as we know it? Well, now I've given you an idea that the Black Panthers did not just only exist in Oakland, California, but they existed on the East Coast in places like New Haven, Connecticut, and New York City. And I've also discovered that it was a community effort at that grassroots level that made peaceful protesting so powerful. And they had to push back against outside forces that were much more powerful than them in order to successfully do it. So that's one way that you can think about how a local story fits into a much more national story. We might also turn our attention to sources that focus on the trial of the New Haven Nine. So the New Haven Nine and Bobby Seale do manage to come out pretty much unscathed. They're acquitted of all charges. But we see the slow decline of the Black Panther Party following the New Haven Nine trial and subsequent acquittal. So what does it mean for the overall power and presence of the Black Panther Party following this particular event? Does it have a negative impact? Does it slow a national movement down? And how do local events like this manage to change things on a national level? These are just some of the questions that you can ask as you're connecting your local history to national history as we know it. And that's the power of doing a local history project for NHD. Now that you've heard my example of a local history topic, what local stories can you find in your communities that may have reshaped history as we know it?